Hello, and welcome to the Kelcast, the Hearthstone Arena podcast, where we try to get better without cursing. I'm Keldar, a longtime Infinite Leaderboard Arena player and streamer on Twitch. Joining me as my co-host is another Arena Leaderboard player, Kel Nabel. If you want to find us on social media, for um, you can search Keldar on Twitch, YouTube, or Twitter. That's K- Keldar, K-E-L-U-D-A-R. All right, Kellen, so what are we looking at this week? Oh, well, today we'll talk about two related things. First, we'll discuss the joy that comes with new set experimentation. We've got a brand new set, and oh my goodness, it's the Wild West out there. And then we'll <laughs> talk about how that experimentation has led us to conclusions about the new set. So two related topics, but uh, both about the new things that are going on. All right, so with that, let's get to our first topic. So the first thing I want to do, and I've been thinking about this for a while um, as we think of new ideas for the podcast, um, I wanted to do... I know everybody wants to hear about, as it is with every stream I do in the first two days, like, give me a tier list. What's the best class right now? And the thing is, is we know what the best class is, but um, it's it's hard to kind of get all that stuff quite so soon because we have to do something called the experimentation phase. And I just wanted to talk about this while this was relevant. Um, and I think, Kellen, you're very, very good at kind of doing what we're about to talk about, which is experimenting with new cards and using it to kind of break down a meta. So... Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's actually something I feel like I've learned from, you know, hanging out and talking to Kellen because it's something that I didn't really do as much. I did. I always kind of was like, take the consistent and safe card and not really try things out. Um, um, but now I don't, now I actually do try some stuff out. So let's get to it. So what do you think experimentation looks like? How does that, what does that look like to you, Kellen? So it, it, it really just the opportunity when the set first comes, comes out to try new strategies, new cards, and, uh, and then different strategies within the same class. So we're, we're used to, from the last meta, whichever meta it was, doing things a certain way. So if it was a, if it was a card generation meta like Mean Streets of Gadgetsan, we're used to thinking about Priest as a class that exists mm-hmm. heavily. You know, it's, it's always on your radar. They're generating a lot of cards. They're clearing boards. They have Potion of Madness. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. So you, you, that goes away, and now you have a new world to play in. So this experimentation phase gives us an opportunity to try new classes and try new cards that we might normally think are bad. Right. Um, in the last meta, for example, um, Hunter was not very good. And in the new meta, we have a new chance to try it out. It might still be bad, but no one knows until you give it a shot. Um, so uh, you also get to try out bad cards, cards that you might normally think weren't very good. Things like uh, the two mana from the last set, as an example, the two mana mage spell that made all of your cards in deck cost, or spells in deck cost three more and be a different spell. Mm-hmm. Or they cost, sorry, they cost the same, but they were cast as spells that cost three more. Uh, so things like that, that wouldn't normally be something you'd even look at. Yeah. This is the perfect time to try everything out because no one knows. We've got to give things a shot. Um, yeah. It also gives you a chance to try out synergy cards. Right now in this new meta, one of the big ones I'm looking at is the two mana, two, three druid uh, rare that makes your first taunt minion every turn cost two less. Yeah, uh, and other cards like that, things that work well specifically with other cards of a same type or set up for um, a combo or something like that, and then it also lets you try different strategies in the same class. So if I'm playing a hunter deck, is there an opportunity to go face hunter and an opportunity to go beast hunter or secret hunter or or what? And I can get uh, in the first couple weeks, in the first week or two, really, I have a chance to try out each of those strategies within the same class and see if it's effective see if it works, see if there's support for it. So yeah. that's that's what it looks like. But uh, that, that's kind of where we are right now. We're, I think we're just approaching the, I don't know, we're starting to get towards the end of that, but that's where we are right now. Yeah, I mean, for sure. It's it's really great to try out some new cards. And um, I've definitely been, you try out new classes as well. Like It's great. And the other thing that we have an advantage of right now is that... Um, there's the whole core set change on top of it. So we've got like, not only are we, uh, not only are we playing with a whole new set and rotation um, and seeing how old sets that came in the uh, gadget sand and all that stuff wrote, you know, how that impacts the, the cards that we're used to using. But we also have this whole new core set with all these new crazy dragons. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we've got the watch posts. So yeah, so like, we'll get know, into the watch posts. <laughs> we'll get we'll get there. But I'm just saying, yeah. So we got lots of things to look at, and um, it's a fun time. Like, I will say, my results aren't great right now, but like, I'm really trying. I'm pushing limits. I'm taking all kinds of weird cards and, that's, and stuff. And I, that is one of the side effects about the experimentation phase. I right. think a lot of people assume that the good players or the infinite players or whatever 
spend the first uh, you know two weeks of a meta just farming noobs. Yeah, and that's not what it looks like. Uh, it might yeah. look like that at some point, but at the beginning, it's just trying everything. And the more things you try, the more farming you will do later on in the expansion. Yeah, and it's also just kind of good to actually, sometimes it's good to play with bad cards because um, you can realize like there's some frenzy cards out there like that maybe you don't need to worry about or ignore. Like by playing with the cards, you can see how big of a threat it is for your opponent to have it as well. So um, it really does give you information just to kind of try things out and see how things work together and different types of, you know, strategies for like Hunter. Do we try to do aggressive? Do we try to do value? Um, you know, and uh, yeah, there's all kinds of great things to do. So, so um, I think one of the things that experimentation really helps with is uh, finding, so like you're talking about, finding sleeper hits and sleeper misses. Yeah. So for example, one of the cards that is not as good as I thought it would be is Lazy Peon or just Peon. I'm not sure, but the two, is, two yeah. three, I, I thought it would be incredible. And as it turns out, it's just slightly above average. It's still a good card. I still want it in my deck. But my opponents have had so many copies of the Peon, and it hasn't done enough for them. You know, I, I keep thinking it's going to be like a premium two drop, and it turns out it's just almost the same as a River Croc in most scenarios. And, um, it, and it's interesting because you'd think by getting a free spell, like if we compare it to, uh, oh crap, what's the two two that gives you the one mana? Wand Maker? Yeah, yeah. So think about Wand Maker. So if you compare it to Wand Maker, you're losing a stat point and you're still getting a spell. But see, the Wand Maker, there are so many good one spells that the the loss of stat point isn't even relevant because you get such a good chance at a big hit on your spell that gives you really good value and high high discovers that like it's so good. Um, Because you would almost think if you looked at those without knowing that, that the two, three would just be better. You get better stats and you still get a card a lot of times. <clears throat> but it turns um, out your opponent's just very likely to attack it with a three, two and then you're yeah, and you might not, and you might, yeah, you just might not even get it. So yeah. It, yeah. So that's, that's an interesting one. Um, so what other kind um, of thing? Another thing that it's, that experimentation really helps with is finding sleeper strategies mm -hmm. or strategies that used to be good that are no longer good. Mm -hmm. So for example, rogue right now is in a bad place and there's a couple, there's a number of reasons why you can figure out, you know, we don't have to go into why it's bad or anything, but I would not have known that until I played as a rogue because I've run into rogues on, you know, in my runs and they didn't seem that bad. I did win. I don't think I've lost to a rogue yet, but if I hadn't had the opportunity to play as a rogue, I wouldn't have realized that, oh, this, this really isn't working right now. And it, and it, it's true. It just doesn't work. Everything that you're trying to do just kind of fizzles when you, when you are a rogue right now. And you need the experience of playing with the class before you understand why that happens or what's going on or if it's even true or not. Right. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, another thing that it helps with is uh, determining offering rates. So, mm -hmm. uh, for example, I think one of the biggest things that people have noticed right now is in Demon Hunter, Coil Fang Warlord is in uh, about 20% of decks, and so is Cycle of Hatred. And I, as someone who has played Demon Hunter and played against Demon Hunter, have found that to be very obvious. The Coil Thing Warlords are there and they're relevant and they are wrecking me. And uh, so are so is Cycle of Hatred. So yeah. I've lost a game to each of those cards individually of my, I mean, I've, I've had runs where I've been ended by three Demon Hunters because they cast those two specific cards. So yeah. you kind of get an idea of what's being offered um, to classes that are, that are doing well and what you need to play around when you're experimenting. So instead of- yeah. Instead of just, you know, drafting a solid curve, you actually can play a game that goes a little longer and find out what people are what people are rocking. And, and right now it does look like, in specifically in Demon Hunter, there's some offering rates that are difficult to compete with because they are offered such great cards. Yeah. And I think another thing it does is it does, it does help you get like a jump on the meta. Like you kind of, uh, I think a lot of times like, I do notice, I don't, I think it, I haven't realized this till recently, how much an impact streamers have on meta sometimes with like, mm. like, and even we've talked about how last time people started drafting Hunter a lot more, I think, because you were talking about it so much um, and like showing how it worked. And uh, it's funny, but you, you, I think if you experiment, you do have a chance once you're done figuring out what's what, you can kind of get a jump on the meta and you can kind of, uh, then you can really start to exploit it because like you can basically start using strategies that other people maybe haven't figured out yet, you know, and that's right. kind of a, that's a really relevant thing as well. 
Kel, uh, do you know of a certain streamer with a 9.4 average at some point who did this exact thing with Priest? I would, I mean, I, I think it might be Dreads. <laughs> it's possible, actually. That, in fact, Dreads did that exact thing. He jumped, he figured out Dragon Priest before anyone else did. And that's how he got to 9.4. He was hitting, I, well, I don't remember what his average with Priest was, but it was approaching 10. And, yeah. and that's how he got his incredible average. He found something before everybody else did. Yeah. And I, and you know, it's funny. I always joke with people. My highest leaderboard finish was actually that month. Right. And it was, and what <laughs> people don't remember about that was that was the synergy synergy pick era. So, mm -hmm. um, and I'll just give a real quick rem What that actually was is they would give you um, like three cards and that were supposed to be like ones that you could build your deck around in the first, like, I don't know, I think it was the first two picks. Um, the first two picks nice. and it and it was so and the thing was is at first it seemed really bad you get these like eggs and things that just didn't make any sense yeah. it was really terrible mm -hmm. but the thing was i figured out really quickly how to to exploit it even though it wasn't a good thing i still figured out like wait i can basically know that i'm going to get this card in this class and that i'm going to mm -hmm. basically draft this way and it gave me an edge i mean i got to like an 8.2 or something average um yeah. And it was like top 10 or top five, or I don't remember exactly. But, you know, anyway, so, it, and I do remember that's something I did too, because everyone else was just complaining, like, oh, this sucks, this sucks. And I was like, yeah, it sucks, but there is something you can do with it, you know? So, right. um, it, yeah, and I think that is something that a lot of the top players do. We, we aren't afraid to like have bad runs the first few days. In fact, I always think Dreads does this too. I think a lot of times Dreads average is like lower on the first couple days, but that's because he's actually trying stuff out. He doesn't, you know, like for instance, I uh, I just had a warlock draft where I passed a uh, a scorpid, which is insane mm -hmm. right now to take that seven mana four ten cleaving taunt for demon for oh man, yeah. just because I was like, well, I don't know, like this card seems pretty insane. I need to know if the, how good this card is, you know, right? S so um, all right, so yeah, I mean, what th what kind of things have you experimented with? So, Kellen, do you have any things you can talk about from this meta that um are kind of examples of what we've been talking about? Yeah, um, so one of the things I've been playing with, I don't know if you know this, but I enjoy playing Hunter, uh -huh. this uh, quality I have. Um, I've I've been enjoying playing Big Hunter, drafting cards that generate other cards. Uh, uh -huh. Part of that is because of Pat Koto. I think Pat Koto is a, uh, an incredible card, just absolutely um, one of the best cards they've ever given to, to Hunter. It's yeah. the three mana, three, three beast that bat has battle cry, discover a w weapon beast and spell. Is that right? I think that's right. Or maybe it's weapon beast and secret. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in any case, it, it is, uh, it generates a card and it generates a good card, especially because the weapon pool is small. So getting ringlings rifle or one of the other good weapons is, is easier to do. <laughs> um, a lot of, a lot of sphere of sapiens, but other than that, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty good <laughs> yeah i got to play with um, it for the first time today it was insane yeah it's just nuts so so there's that and then you can keep drafting value cards because there are still plenty of cards that are curve cards that generate value so things like wasteland scorpion things like uh i mean steward of scrolls and uh dragon moss sky stalker all these two for ones that you play on curve and they are close to equivalent value mm. and druid also or excuse me hunter also happens to have some good expensive cards right now too like the grand slam and things like that. So yeah, um, playing big hunter has been successful for me. I am averaging uh, eight and a half wins with that class right now over four runs. Um, just drafting that strategy. Uh, Taunt druid has been fun for me. And I mentioned that briefly earlier, but that two mana, two, three rare that makes your first taunt minion cost two less. It works on the turn you play it. So when you play that yeah. card and then play a taunt minion, you've basically cast the two, three for, for zero mana and also protected it for a turn. So it's possible to get the second, two mana reduction on the following turn. So um, I've had somewhat success with that. I went eight on the deck, or I went eight wins on the deck where I was able to draft it correctly. Mm -hmm. And I had another deck where I, I didn't decide to do it until it was too late. And it was a drafting error on my, my part. Mm -hmm. And that deck still ended up going seven. So um, I, I think there's potential there. I don't know if it's good enough, but it's worth looking at. I tried. Um, and then yeah. I've, I've looked at a couple of curve classes and played them as curve classes. And some of them you'd be surprised are curve classes. Um, mage, Paladin, and Priest. Now, Paladin, no one's surprised, right? That's a yeah, curve yeah, class, right, always right. has been. But Mage and Priest, those look like curve classes to me right now. And a big part of that is the four mana five seven that uh, that that deals five to you with his death rattle. Mm -hmm. 
that card in Mage and Priest lets you play it on four, and then you can back it up with cards that things like Wand Thief or Renew that both uh, generate you a card and continue to produce board presence. In order for Renew to be a great board presence card, though, you have to have a high health minion, like a 4-mana 5-7. So um, I've found that Mage and Priest play really well as curve classes right now. And, of course, Paladin does because, lol, Paladin. Just kind of what it does. Yeah. Um, yeah, what about you? Have you, uh, have you found anything fun in Forge and the Barons that was surprising to you? I've been surprised how I've been doing really well with Warrior. Um, and I've been doing... I've kind of been... <laughs> I, I mean, this this is I can't say that this is really a, a a completely relevant strategy because it does depend on what you're offered. But I've been having success with purposely kind of going for frenzy synergies with warrior. So mm -hmm. now again, that's partly because I've been offered them, but I've been kind of pushing that synergy a bit. And like I took the gr the gruntled patron in one deck, and in five or six games, the deck went twelve. And in five or six games, I got two copies of it and that was enough to make the card i wouldn't say even the card was still insane but it when my where it was really good the opponents would have really small minions and it was awkward because they couldn't trade into it you know sure. um and then also i had two of the uh four mana two sixes that double whirlwinds you know and stuff like that yeah, and it, that's I, I i'm really impressed with that card it surprised me on the the um I, I mean we knew it was good but man it's been uh, it's overperformed what we, we expected i agree that that's definitely performed well and i've still they obviously still have some of their other big hits um i'm just and I'm, what's funny is i'm finding with warrior the lot of my decks now this is just luck but my my decks are not ending up with a lot of weapons i'm actually kind of playing just like minion warrior and taunts and big yep. cards and the value generations and like a couple times I got War Cash discovered. I never I haven't drafted yet, but holy crap, when you hit that with Warrior, it's like it's pretty good. Um yeah. so so let's uh let's talk about what we've been seeing that works. And I think Warrior is a great place to start. Um yeah. I've ran into Warrior and it's been good when I play it, but more importantly, I keep running into it when I get to seven plus wins. Yeah. Um what do you think is pushing warrior to that high level? Is it just the cards themselves or what, what is, what is making warrior great? Well, I think it's part, we, we can take a small jump to talk about what's actually kind of going on in the meta to explain it because what's making it work is the fact that the meta is instead of, I called like last meta, the like ultra swing meta where like, no matter what you played, it didn't stick on the board. If you played a taunt, they rushed it down. Like they had a removal. There was always some kind of answer. And now yeah. I'm finding that it's kind of that awkward, like, oh, well, you got a taunt and I've got a taunt and the ma the stats don't match and we got to figure out how to get through this. Yeah. And so I think Warrior succeeding because they have the big health taunts and the big things that you, they can generate. And basically they can take a slow game and like get it to the end that way and they can kind of grind you out. And I am finding finally that people are starting to run out of cards at the end. Like you're getting to a point where eventually both players stabilize with like one or two cards in hand and that's it. You know what I mean? And that's, so, yeah, I, I would say that this is one of the metas where I've seen the least amount of hero powers used. I, I don't feel like hero power is getting used very often. Um, I, yeah. I, and I think that really benefits warrior because of all the classes that don't want to use their hero power, warrior is number one. Yep. <laughs> Um, people have a, a good cards at every point on their curve, whether they are drafting for curve or not, they just have those cause they exist. Yep. Um, like you're, you're going to be offered threes and twos. You just want to take in regardless of curve considerations. So people have cards to play every turn of the game. And I think mm -hmm. warriors card generation is high because of things like, like you mentioned, like war cash and, yeah. uh, and the weapon that draws you three cards over three turns. There's, they have the ability to keep using their mana without having to push the hero power button. And on top of that, a lot of those awkward boards end up with there being like one or two health left over, and they have a lot of and little. And they I have know, a it, double one point eight. Yeah, exactly. Very good point. Yeah. Yeah, they just they have the ways to deal with the type of boards that I'm seeing, um, and they just have insane card quality, um, which is really what like they're just minions that are in their class are just really strong, so they're good just right fantastic. now. Um, and I think that you can try some different strategies. I wouldn't try going necessarily aggro with them, but they um, just draft good cards and um, you can mess around with some synergies and have some fun with it. I just find, I actually, to me right now, it's the, the class that I'm having the most fun playing. 
Um, not just yeah. because of like the success rate. I just I'm having fun with like messing around with frenzy and stuff. I just like I like it right now a lot. Um, so so what else? What else is working besides Warrior in, in your experience? Like, what have you seen working for people? Well, I mean, we all we can say quickly that Demon Hunter is working. I think. Um, we talked about that a little bit, but I do think there's some kind of, my personal belief is that they were trying to overtune the, um, class cards because they have less class cards than everyone else in the metas. And I think they just kind of overdid it. Um, so, well, but, it's, and it's not just your personal experience. The HS replay data backs it up. 20% of decks have a cycle of hatred and 20% of decks have a coil thing warlord. It's, yeah. um, they are being offered the cards they want way more often than they were less meta. And I don't know if that means they've just removed um some right. of the the nerfs they did before or what but any no matter what the situation is they yeah. have access to more of their better cards than they had last meta yeah and they're just uh they're one mana hero power it, it, you know like we said we we've kind of talked about this at first day i was thinking this might be a tempo meta which i don't think it is but it does matter to get minions on board and play all your mana like you were saying and kind of keep yeah, it's kind of a slower. Te uh, it's probably not. It almost is kind of mid rangey to me. Like it's just very like kind of like you're just throwing your minions out and just kind of. But eventually, whoever has the better quality minions that survive that kind of back and forth is the one that ends up winning and outlasting. Um, and just like you said with Warrior, you said yeah, like you mentioned yeah. with Warrior that it's able to finish off those boards right with their yes. one point AOE. Well, Demon Hunter has that built into its class. It's the only class that has a one mana hero power. And that hero power helps finish off boards and clear things up for your next turn. Yeah. Um, I can't say that I, I've no, I've seen it have success against me, but I haven't got to actually... I actually just drafted one, but I haven't got to play it yet. But uh, I know Warlock's been good. I I My prediction was it was going to be really insane because of their amount of healing built in. Have you got to play Warlock a little bit? I, I have. Actually, more I've lost to Warlock, and I tend to lose to Warlock because of exactly what you're talking about. We'll get down to yeah. near the end of the game, and we'll, you know, we'll be kind of even on cards, and then I will have a board advantage, and I'll go all in to fill, finish them off over two turns or something, and this happened a number of times. This isn't a yeah. single right, right, experience. Right. And they'll cast Drain Life or Drain Soul, I mean, sorry, Drain Soul, right. or uh, Siphon Soul, or something else like that, and th suddenly they'll be back up to 12, and I had them at 6. And yeah. And now my fireball doesn't finish them, or now my weapon plus uh, plus uh, one stealth minion doesn't finish them, and that's been um, it's been a I think that's one of the learning curve things that's going to happen, and part of what if experimentation helps with. Um, I'm not so keen on attacking face against warlock anymore, like I used to be. I used to be really interested in attacking face, and now I think you might need to trade more often. And I'm not saying this right, right. in stone or anything, but. But because they have healing and because they have the uh, four mana minion that buffs something on battle cry and death rattle, yep, uh, it feels like clearing their board is a much more, uh, much more effective than it has been in the past. Well, and they also have a ton of cards. They have the one that sacrifices a minion and it does two damage AOE. They have the um, one that gives lackeys when they destroy a minion. They have a lot of effects that they benefit from destroying their minions. Even so, there's there is actually yeah. a lot of benefits. So thinking about those turns um as well and like how they can utilize it so yeah i, I think warlock and they also again Actually, you know go ahead go ahead oh i, just, I was gonna say what their their current best card that is not a legendary is from the new set can you guess what it is uh a, oh you said it's a legendary no it's not a legendary i'm excluding legendaries Oh god, I'm trying to think about all their new. I don't know. I can't think of all their new cards right now. Which one is it? Well, there's only there's the two best warlock cards are soul rend which is the five point aoe okay and more Shan watch post, which we might want to get into right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. Let's get into it. We don't it. need to do too much, but uh, more Shan watch post was a mistake, everyone. It was a mistake. It should not exist. Yeah. That's it. Um, it overperforms uh, what its stats are. Uh, it does not need to attack because your opponent is desperate to attack and kill it anyways. And uh, the two twos that it generates are. Um, just normal tutus, so they still do everything a normal tutu would deal. Yeah. Uh, the card ends up being typically, in my experience, a three mana seven nine in terms of total stats. Mm -hmm. And uh, just in case you weren't sure, that's significantly better than four mana seven seven. So uh, it is going to make classes that can play it and have it be useful significantly better. And it turns out that just is all the classes. 
Now, there has been a post by one of the developers that they're definitely looking this week at potentially removing it and that kind of thing, or at least looking at it as a problem for Arena. Um, yeah. But I'm going to tell you guys in the meantime, and I'll say it, I'll admit it now, I was wrong about the card a little bit, but I will also, the one thing I will say is that when we were doing that card review, we did it in two and a half hours. So like I, w- I didn't look at those beforehand, so I didn't really think through like the whole thing as much as I should have. But yeah, it's definitely insane. Well, it's it's nuts. This just the the stat line itself is fantastic. A three mana three five. Yeah. Whether it attacks or not, if your opponent has to deal with it, it doesn't matter if it can attack. It only the attacking part only becomes face damage if you if your opponent has to deal with it. And mm. so basically it's a more if, if you made a three mana three five that could not attack minions, I'm sorry, that could not attack face, mm. that card would be fine. That card would be playable. I would draft that card. Uh that's basically what Morshan Watch Post does, but also it makes a million tutus when it comes to play, or you know, whenever your opponent tries to play Hearthstone. When I thought about what I thought the meta was going to be, I thought that they, there isn't nearly as much rush as there was, and right. I thought that it wouldn't be quite as hard to remove as it is, has been. But I, one it's thing, I, tough. But I want to tell you guys, there is a way that I've been able to neutralize it pretty well. I can I can say that I'm that because I had someone play turn one watch post into turn two watch post into turn three watch post and I survived. Okay, so it is it is possible. Okay, just saying. Um, but what you really need to focus on doing is there's there's a couple of cards in the meta that help you contend with that card that I'm just saying for now until they remove it. These are things you should look at. You draft every poisonous score, but you see. Um, one, it gives you a poisonous minion to deal with the three, five watch bows, and it can give you a spell that also can deal with it. So if you can get it out before they play it, that obviously helps. The other thing I would say is any kind of two or three mana, like, uh, sorry, uh, spell removal, you know, like in, in, uh, what do you call it? Priest. I, I take that three mana deal four damage with life steal to everything every time now because that helps me deal with that card. So there are things... I, I think Fireball goes up a lot in value in Mage. Things exactly, like things like that. So, I mean, it is a card, unfortunately, that you should consider, because if you don't have an answer to it, um, and it should affect your mulligans as well. So yeah. um, just things that you can try to do to deal with it for now. Um, I do think it probably will get removed, but I'm not sure yet. Um, so, but... So, Kel... Uh... What are we looking forward to? Are there things that you're looking forward to trying or things that you think will be good going forward that you're happy to play with? Uh, what what are you looking forward to with this meta? Well, um, I'm feeling a little bit discouraged after a couple things I've seen about Druid. I, I'm i realizing now how, how important it was for them to have Swipe, even though because it was a good catch-up mechanic in their spells. Yeah. Um, I still am hopeful that I can figure out a way, but they're, I think the only possible way to make them work is some kind of big version of Warrior where you play these big-ass minions and just kind of outvalue people that way. Um, I'm also looking forward yeah. to trying... Um, I definitely... I, I messed around with a Hunter today where I did all the little... I had double... Basically, I had double Web Spinner and double the um, Shimmer Fly, and I had like Ooh, no... Yeah. I had no cards that were bigger than a 5-drop, and I had two of the 4-mana 5-7s. Um, and I had dire frenzy and stuff. I, it didn't work out. I, I think, see what I did is I tried to use the little value cards and the randomness of it. I don't know if it worked and maybe I just got unlucky, but I really liked it. Um, as a, as a deck, it did get like five wins, but I, I think it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to messing around with Hunter. Um, I haven't got to try a paladin yet, but I'm just, I'm excited to just mess around with everything. I'm still, I'm still just not really thinking about results and just like tr- drafting cards. Um, Mm-hmm. Oh, another quick little s- side note is I'm seeing for priest the classes that the priest decks that go twelve are the ones that get draconic studies or the ones that okay. get a lot of um, you know the two mana two two to get draconic studies. <laughs> so the wand makers, and- yeah. So basically, draconic studies because when you play draconic studies now, like you were almost guaranteed to get one of the dragons that's just insanely broken. It almost guaranteed. And many yeah. times you'll actually see three of the dragons that are broken in one thing. So um I, I sent you a screenshot of getting I was offered Isera, uh Alex Straza, and Malagos, I think. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, there's there it's a lot easier to get some legendary dragons right now. Yeah. Um but yeah, so I, I really like I think 
I think if you can draft a good curve and get some of those cards, you can do well. Um, I don't think Big Priest is going to do as well because you don't have the mind controls and stuff. Um, let's just throw out one other point I want to say. It is so nice to play a Proto Drake or a Colossus and not clench waiting for like the doom yep. of it to come. Like it's even because like even when you would draw it, like it'd be turn six and you draw your Proto Drake and you're sitting there just going, oh, God, I'm going to have to play it. Like, you know what I'm talking about? You guys know what I'm talking about. I, I know what you're talking about. Because you you know it's coming, and you know that it's going to lose you the game, and you know there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so, so no mind control is basically our highlight of playing against Priest? <laughs> oh, it's well, no, not just that, though. I mean, no Thought Steal, no um, Shadow Madness. Like, all the cards, a lot of the cards, they lost Pain even. Pain was a big loss. Um, yeah, Shadow they're two mana one three that steals a card from your deck every turn has not been. I've beaten my opponent every time they play it. it. Even when it gets a card, sometimes even two, it still doesn't do it fast enough or pr produce enough of a board presence to really matter. Yeah, sorry, Tarrant. I don't, I don't, I don't. I still don't agree with you on that one. <laughs> on which one? I, on the on the caravans. He's high on the caravans. I it's it's personal experience, but so far I've destroyed them. Um, I have not found them to be good. No, but um. Yeah, so like lots of cool things to try. Um, oh, I want to say one other small thing. I actually yeah. can say that I feel like I really underestimated Frenzy. And what I mean is that when I saw Frenzy, I kind of just was like, okay, another just kind of whatever mechanic. Like, I'm just going to that that was my initial reaction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought Spellburst was a cool mechanic, to be honest, but like, and some of them, but like a lot of times I see a mechanic, I'm like, man, that's lazy. Like, okay, sure. Like, that's great. But like Frenzy, I, I, I think I didn't really think about it in all respects how it's so awkward because it triggers on the opponent on your side of the board, both sides of the board. Um, yeah. So I've been really enjoying the awkwardness of like, oh, like my opponent just played the six mana four eight and like I've got like these three big minions. Now, how am I going to like deal with this problem? You know, like right, I feel what's, like what's the best way to deal with this correctly? Yeah, because. I don't think I really realized it till this meta, but last meta with all the re like remove, 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 I felt like it kind of got brainless. It just was like whoever had it, you played it, and that was it. Now I find myself really using my brain again and really thinking, having to think through how to deal with these board states, and I I do really enjoy that personally. So yeah, it, it seems frenzy is a mechanic that your opponent most is often the person who has the opportunity to interact with it first. So as someone who's playing in the meta, when my opponent plays a frenzy card. I'm the one who gets a chance to deal with it or play around it. And mm. uh, I think that's way more fun than uh, Spell Burst or any of these other abilities where, I mean, Onyx Mage Crab costs six, but we all know it costs six plus whatever the cost of your spell in hand is. Right. Right? It's not, it's not, uh, you're not playing Mage Crab, hopefully. I mean, your goal is to not play it as a six drop. Right. Your goal is to play it and guarantee the value. Yeah. And I think that's what's different with Frenzy is, you just play them on curve and then your opponent gets to interact with you and they get a, a chance to do something to either make your play good or bad or maybe not either of those things, but they, they have a chance for interaction. And um, Spell Burst and the, the other mechanics we've seen recently don't provide that where Frenzy really does. Yeah, and I really think, um, for instance, another one, the three mana, three, four Frenzy that has the Divine Shield. Mm. Man, that card... I do. I stand behind my rating, man. That card is. I gave it a four and a half, which I know is really high for like a kind of like a uh, I don't know, just like a statted type of minion like that. But man, alive! That card is so freaking annoying. I love that thing. It is very annoying. Um. So yeah, I think we have a lot of things to talk about. Um. I did want to give you guys. We wanted to give you guys a little bit of a take on the meta, but I also wanted to really get in this topic about experimenting. But I think that pretty much will do it for now. Um, yeah. Next week, I'm trying to get together. Um, we're maybe planning on doing another one of our arena roundtables where we talk about, like, really. I think next week we're gonna really dive into like what's working and what, because by next week we should have a lot more information. So, right. um, I'm really, really looking forward to that. So, me too. All right, guys. I think that's gonna do it for us for today. Um, the tenth episode of the Calcast, big one zero there. So we're gonna join. You can join <laughs> us live every uh, every Saturday, eight PM Eastern on Twitch, or you can download the podcast wherever you get them. Every Monday, you can also find me on Twitch where I stream daily, seven AM Eastern, Monday through Friday, or you can find me on YouTube or Twitter by searching Keldar. That's K E L U D A D A R. All right, so make sure you tune in next week. Like I said, 
We're going to try to work on our second arena round table. Um, I'll be announcing the, um, the guests we'll be having soon. Um, big thanks to John Lauks again for the amazing music that begin and end each of one of our episodes. And, um, you can find a link to our contributors in the show notes. So this has been the Calcast. See you next week. Okay. Kel. Uh... No, no, no. Let me, let me stop you right there. I got something I gotta get off my chest. Okay. 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 What the fuck is watch post? Seriously. I'm sorry, but I had to steal it from you. <laughs> Everybody's getting on my fucking case about the damn watch post because I gave it a fucking three. I'm sorry, okay? It's fucking five, okay? <laughs> Just leave me alone. Adwok is calling me out. Fucking Terrence calling me out. Everybody's calling me out. All right, we did it fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just leave me alone. <laughs> hey, uh, on that same topic, uh, was Scorpion really necessary? Did they really have to make that card? No. No, it really wasn't necessary. It wasn't. Yeah, between Scorpion and Watch Post, I just feel like the whole. I just. I can't run a game without run. I mean, a whole run. Three of my losses will be to one of those two cards. I just can't do it. It just. It's so annoying. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, those cards suck. I'm so tired of them. I don't want to see them ever again. The thing is, is I know how bad or how good Watch Post is because when I had the game, I, I probably should have. I didn't realize we we're going to talk about this at the end, but. I basically, if you guys didn't catch earlier, I had a guy that coined a watch post, the two mana one on turn one. He top decked a two mana watch post on two and played it. And then he top decked the third, the three mana one and played it. I had a really good play and was able to beat it with my three mana mark of the Lotus. And my Murloc tiny fin became two mana. Zero. Oh my <laughs> but I, God. But anyway, I beat it. But um, the elation I felt, Cause like I gotta tell you, I cr I absolutely crushed this dude. After those watch posts were gone, like I obliterated him. Like he was, it wasn't even close the game. And I'm thinking yeah. to myself, like I should not be this happy that I beat these three cards that can't attack. But I was like, <laughs> but like yeah. I was My so happy. Me and I was still mad. <laughs> Once I realized that I got past the the initial hit of the watch post, I was like, if I can win this game, like who can say that they will they beat this? You know, so. Um, if there's anything I'm happy about the watch post being there, it was just that I got to experience that. That's one thing I look for in Hearthstone is just these experiences, you know, like when I like, you know, these random crazy things that happen. That's what, that's one thing about Hearthstone as much as we hate all the RNG is what makes it great. So it's true. We all hate it, but we also can't admit that it's not part of what we love. That's, that's a good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> all right. I that's... And I love it. It's a dual sided weapon. All right. That's it. Over and out everyone. See you next week.